What's happening, everybody? This is Robert the Leather Cowboy, Muhammad, right here, Premier Leather Crafters, in the dirty, dirty. You guys forgive the uh, the progress, uh, the chaos, so to speak. Um, I'm also in the process of moving to another shop. Uh, hopefully, this will be my last move um, that I do. But as business and things continue to get bigger and better, then I'm acquiring and needing more space. So. With that being said, let's get right off into this. Um, this is uh, really a video uh, about the sandal making, or there was a question that was on one of the gills about um, putting up a PDF. I, that's a little bit out of my warehouse about doing a PDF. I'm pretty sure I probably can learn how to do one and get you guys one set up. And uh, But I figured that... Um, if you follow me on YouTube or watch any of my videos on YouTube, uh, there are several videos that are out there on YouTube that somebody can watch and pick up different tips and hints and things like that. But here, I just want to show you guys how I do mine, uh, which is uh, basically um, I took a culmination of a lot of different crafters that was out there uh, that are out there that are doing videos, and I put them all together and and come up with my own uh, particular uh, way of doing them. So now uh, you guys, uh, if you haven't followed my videos on YouTube or haven't watched any of my videos on YouTube, let me tell you first, um, I'm all about saving uh, on the front end to maximize your profits on the tail end. Now, and this is what I, I do as far as in my company, um, and, and it works out for me. Now, you can spend a whole bunch of money. Um, I wouldn't tell you to spend a whole bunch of money on uh, buying stuff right now if you just want to get off into doing um, the sandals because there is a more economical way. The same way that I did in the beginning is the same way that I'm going to tell you guys until you get your feet wet to where you feel comfortable with making them or you start having a lot of customers that's calling in and requesting them then you can start spending more money as you're starting to acquire and generate more money so the first thing i would tell you to do is save your money on buying um patterns uh you don't have to do uh as as far as the soling of the shoe the cheapest way that i uh, when i first started out doing these uh i will go to walmart Walmart, Dollar General, Dollar Tree, whoever has those little cheap plastic flip-flops, uh, which are like 99 cent. I think you can get them at Dollar Tree for like 89 cent if you have one in your area. But uh, get you a little cheap pair of those, and they range anywhere from little kid sizes all the way up to adult sizes, and you only have a dollar investment that's into those. So whichever your shoe size is or whatever shoe size that you're trying to make for a customer um buy those first and then you can get your pattern out now once you have your pattern then all you do is trace your pattern onto cardboard poster board i use stuff that's already around my house um or already around the house um which is it can be cereal boxes like you guys can see here this came off a whole catalog uh frosted flake box took that and made a pattern off of it size 11 and this was for one customer that that I mean she's a she has a nice size foot for a woman uh, also this is one of the other little small ones uh, that came off of the little plastic ones uh, and you can go ahead and pre punch your hole punches there uh, for your toe thongs uh, and then here is another variation of a, of a sandal to where you will want to where your straps will go in up under the foot the the instep of the shoe uh you can place that and just use this to save you money on buying patterns and then it's a you got to keep in mind that this is a flip-flop that you're going to tear up so i wouldn't tell you to go out there and spend 40 50 dollars on a pair of yellow box flip-flops or or go off into another department store and spend that kind of money on a pair of flip-flops that you're going to tear up just to take a pattern off of. There's also another way that you can do this is if you have a customer that already has a favorite pair of sandals that uh, they, they, they know that their foot is perfectly matched up with that. Um, a lot of my clients and customers are not in my area 
So uh, it's very simple to have them place their foot on top of a piece of paper or that shoe on top of a piece of paper, trace it out with a pencil or a pen, and then they can email that to you or they can mail it to you. Either way, you have the exact same size on that paper. And all you would need is just the one foot. Uh, a lot of times they will tell you to use the right foot. And this is an old, something that's been around for ancient years and years and years, I, I would imagine. But people used to always size your foot by the right foot because they say your right foot is bigger than the left or what, 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 what. That's not always the case. It's primarily the dominant side. And that's one thing that you want to ask your customers, which one is their dominant foot? So, and the way that you can know that is if they were running in a race, which foot is there or which leg is propped up most to give them that burst of, of, of leap out of the box if they was running a race? Or what foot would they lead off of on the race? That is the size or the foot that you will want to size. In my experience, now somebody else might tell you something different, but over the year and a half that I've been making these, that is what that is what has worked for me to find out what the dominant foot or the dominant leg is. You know, everybody is not right-handed in the world, so your right hand is not your dominant hand. It could be your left. So, and it's the same way as in with your feet. So you have a dominant foot and a dominant hand. So find out that from the customer and then have them measure or draw, trace that foot. And that's the one that you will build off of. Now, being that uh, that's the simplest way that I can tell you to get your patterns. And then even if you did all six sizes, if you're doing adult sizes from a six to a size 12, you only spent $6.00 on a general base pattern on the foot. Now you you will you will run into times where you have some adults who still have little small feet, but again, it's only one dollar that you will spend on that. So that would that is where I would tell you to start to get your base pattern, and you can work with that. You don't have to change that. You can stick with that a lot, unless unless you run into a customer or a client who has like a size E width or double E or triple E. Then, the, then that will cost you a little bit more money to buy those sandals. Even at Walmart, you still can find them for like four or five dollars. But you also put that into your pricing as far as the designing and creating your shoes, uh, your sandals. So I'm going to adjust the camera here and basically show you guys from a sandal that I am already in the works, uh, that's in the making. Uh, and the pattern that I've taken these off of is from a Steve Yizik uh, pattern pack that I bought. I, I, oh wait, I wanna know, I don't, Yizik, Y-E-Z-E-K. Uh, he's, he's on pretty much all of the, the uh, he's a known leather crafter that's around uh, and he has pattern packs that's already out there. So, uh, and I like his Daisy design. So I actually, took, now he doesn't have a sandal design for his uh, um, for his Daisy patterns, but I basically just taken some from different artworks that he had in that pattern pack and utilize them on my piece. So I'm gonna turn the camera and let you guys see just exactly what we're working with here. And this is the one um, that is a Steve Yizik pattern. And what I've done, I took the clutch purse or the clutch design. Uh, it's this way. I took the clutch design and I drew that out onto my sandal straps this way. So it's all one flowing continuous piece. And then I cut and separated my straps. Now, the way this particular sandal is going to work is everybody doesn't like the toe thongs. So this is for another client of mine that uh, I had to come up with something that was not a toe thong design. And it worked out perfectly. 
and not in all cases. Now, I like doing the slide type sandals a lot better because everybody's depth between their toes is not the same. You have some customers or some clients that will have longer toes. You have some clients and customers that will have shorter toes and the depth in between the toes is not the same. So with doing the slide pattern, I like these a lot better. Now in this regard, especially where I don't have the customer's foot here, the, this client is in uh, uh, Tampa, Florida. So I basically have to not guesstimate. Now the thing that I did do that was a lot different with the slide design is uh, this is where a shoe last will come in very handy. You can find these on eBay. Um, or you can find the plastic ones. This, this is the wood, what the actual cobblers use themselves. And it has the two part where it'll bend and come out if I was doing a whole shoe. But man, this is a sandal. Uh, it works fine for me. And you can buy these in different sizes, different widths. They all come in the basic men's standard size. Now, how do you would equate this for a woman's uh, foot? You have to remember that the difference between a woman's foot and a man's foot is two sizes. So if um, you have a size nine shoe last, uh, or if, if the, in other words, if the woman has a size um, a seven foot, uh, on a shoe last, as far as when you're ordering the men's, you would have to use a size five. So this lady particular customer is a size nine in women's. So I'm using a seven for men's in the shoe last to get the right type of depth and uh, arch across the bridge of the foot. And then I use these to give me a general rough idea about how tight I need to make the straps. And so I'll pull these down until it comes up with the right uh, tightness across the foot. And that'll be pretty well for me. Um, and then I'm gonna do some other things with the particular sandal because the tangent sandal is what's popular right now. Uh, you will know the tandem, not tangent, tandem. The tandem sandals are ones that have multiple straps. Nike has really, uh, making uh, Nike is really making those popular right now. Um, a lot of people are using them for hiking, so you just don't have a regular hiking boot. Uh, Nike has come up with a tangent sandal, uh, a tandem sandal that where you can also wear these sandals with the toes exposed because they have multiple straps. So I am also going to utilize and put a strap in that will wrap around the ankle, but this. Uh, basically, sandal making, uh, as far as Premier Leather Crafters is concerned, is simply, it's all about your creativity and how well you see uh, in what you see in your mind about how you want your sandal to be made. Now, again, there are multiple videos that are out uh, that you can watch on YouTube that will probably give you a lot more uh, insight but being that uh, I can't put a whole lot of time uh, on the, the gills page with this particular video, uh, I'm just going to give you guys just the rough of what I do. Um, and this is just one particular sandal. Even if it was the toe thong sandal uh, to where we have the, the thong in between the toes, uh, you still can come up and utilize um, off of those off of those little cheap sandals that you purchase, you can also take the thongs or the straps and make you a pattern out of it. And again, lay them, lay them down on a piece of poster board, cereal box, whatever. Tape it with cellophane tape to preserve the, the paper so the paper doesn't become wrinkled and withered and bent and out of shape. Keep them in a folder somewhere. And then making the toe thongs. Your toe thongs are really very simple. The way I created these and uh, uh, made these are very simple. Uh, basically, you just get a piece of uh, poster board here. And just to show you guys real quick how to do these, 
to come up with your toe thong. Uh, you'll take your ruler. Please, you guys, don't make fun of my pink ruler. This belongs to my daughter. Um, and you want to cut these about three inches. So, uh, real quick, just to give you a simple toe thong. Just to give you a simple toe thong. And you want to do these three inches. And we're just going to mark off three inches here. Slide that over and mark off another three. And this is just coming up with your straps. Now, and again, it depends on what strap that you guys have in mind. Now, the first one, and we're going to mark these off an inch apart from each other. An inch apart from each other. So you're going to break that, thing, those, that three inches down. And this is where we're going to cut the um, the bands and the toe strap. Now I have saw and we're going to do them a uh, one inch or inch and a quarter width. So you got to do them with an inch and a quarter wide by three inches. Just to show you guys how I do the toe thongs real quick because I don't want to keep you long. And this is my thong pat, my toe thong pattern here. So, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in about a half inch on both sides and cut that all the way up. And then you bend these. Now, of course, this top part is going in between my leathers at the top here. And this bottom part is going uh, into the sole, up under the sole of the shoe, uh, up under that first top layer there. Now, I use two layers in, in my sandals, and then my third layer, uh, my bottom layer, is my rubber that I put onto the bottom of it. Um, you can go several companies. Well, let me get back to this before I jump start. This middle part here, I'm going to fold this in half, and that makes the barrel on my toe thongs that goes in between the toes. This is has worked out a lot better for me uh, in the beginning when I first started doing these. Um, I wasn't actually making these and then I watched another guy's video on YouTube and saw that how he was doing his. And it was very unique to me and more, a lot more comfortable. Uh, I had a raving reviews from customers and clients that really liked that barrel better because it was it fit right into the natural bend of the toes. So, uh, and once you bend that, you would use your uh, your chisel punch and punch down both sides, and then you can lace this or stitch this in the middle, and that will give you this barrel type effect here. Same thing that I've done there. Very comfortable. Very, 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 and it makes your, your sandals look a whole lot sharp. And again, you got that bottom flap, and you can see right here on the top to where that top part is in between the two sets of leather here and my top leather. And then this will go, uh, if I was doing the actual shoe itself, um, I would just basically take the bottom part and roll that, make like a little roll just like so and then i will use this to go into my my whole slot in the top layer of my sandals and this is where i will glue and stitch this into the top so you don't have to worry about it coming apart or coming loose that's how i do that and so and it should look exactly something like this and it's basically that's how you do on the toe thong part now on um now, the one thing I would have to tell you is, once you get to that part on, on doing your sandals and making sure that they're going to stay there, uh, make sure that that's where everything is lining up. You would have to check multiple times to make sure that you don't make any mishaps or mistakes. Even with these, uh, with the slide, uh, what they call these, the Gucci slide style, uh, and with your excess or your overage, 
And the thing here, once you get to the point to where they're perfectly sized on your shoe last, you can even try these on your own foot first, just to make sure that everything matches up just like you want it. Even your designing or whatever tooling that you decide to do, you want to make sure that everything is centered before you make the final cut on the bottom to take off all of your extra. You want to take off all of that extra because when you when you get done with these, when you get them like you like them, you want these to be flush and even with no overhang. Because in your second layer, this layer here, this is where we're going to mark off our slot so the leather will sit down in between this second layer of your of your sandal. This is where you want it to fit. And then that way when it fits, it'll fit solid and flush. Uh, let me give you an example. Kind of like these here. To where this is the second layer that has been cut out. And this is the top part of the sandal here. And I want these to sit down flush and flat. So when I glue this together, they would all match and made up perfect. And this is where, again, another example of where I cut the extra off to where they mat mate and match up perfect with no bulking, no overhang. And then now this pair is actually ready for the rubber to go onto the bottom. And once you, you, um, put your, your rubber on, make sure that you leave these uh, long enough to where it will completely bond. Now, there's a lot of stuff that a lot of crafters use. I know the uh, Echo Well is very popular right now, but this is what I use. Uh, you can get this at Walmart. Um, you don't have to buy everything from Tandy or Springfellow or these, these uh, leather supply stores. It, you can because it says... Um, leather contact cement or leather whatever but this stuff right here was told to me by uh, uh an old school crafter og crafter uh which we call in the south og you know uh, he's been around for a long time and he, this stuff you can buy this whole can which is 16 fluid ounces for five dollars at walmart you can buy this for five dollars at Walmart and just simply use just a regular old disposable throwaway paintbrush. And what I have found, even with using the weld wood, uh, I would coat my leather once on both sides and I allow it to get tacky. Let it get tacky. And then I would put another coat on top of that because I want this to be super bonding tight when I get ready to put these together. Uh, as also the the over the period of time that the customer or the client will have these, they don't have to worry about the shoe splitting or coming loose. Now another great part I like about it because uh, now these two top layers, uh, I will sew these two together, but I won't sew them to the the rubber sole itself. One um, unless you have like a super heavy duty. Um, sewing machine that will pierce through the leather and 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 grab a hold uh to where they won't come apart um i don't think that you should have to do that you can it's an option but i don't one because with my products uh that that i offer is i also give my clients a lifetime guarantee and to my understanding i won't say i'm the only one but I will resole a pair of sandals, which is something that's not too many companies out there that's doing. There's, I mean, you can't even take a pair of Nikes and have Nikes resold, even after you spend two hundred, three hundred dollars on a pair of Michael Jordans or three hundred dollars on a pair of LeBron James. Once those soles are gone, you just throwing away three hundred dollars. So what I offer my clients is they can send the shoes back, send the sandals back. And I will resole them and they'll have a brand new pair. Not a brand new pair, but they will have an, another pair. When you're paying $250 for a pair of sandals, you you want your customers to feel like they're actually getting their money worth. So I, I would tell them if the, if the sole starts to wear, which they will over a period of time, even if you're only wearing these as seasonal shoes, uh, a lot of my clients like in Florida, uh, 
it's pretty warm down there all the time. Same as it is some of my clients in California. It's pretty warm there all the time. So they can pretty much get away with wearing sandals all year long. So in places like that, you want to give them, they want to feel that they spent, they $250 is worth the, uh, 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 the money that they spent on a product. So they can mail them back. They'll get uh, resold. I'll re-oil them. Uh, as well, even when I do ship, I also ship like a little one ounce bottle of Neat's Foot Oil because the salt from our skin and sweat would eventually cause the uh, the resoline or the super sheen, whatever you use to finish to seal those, the salt in our skin uh, when our feet sweat will eventually start to peel away um, uh, on that sealing. Now, they'll last for a while, but it's just like the sealer on your car. That that clear coat that's sprayed on that's sprayed onto your car to lock in the paint is not there permanently. You 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 guys have probably seen some cars to where the sap from trees have eaten through the clear coat, and it makes the to the, the start. Then it will start to affect the paint. So when a client of mine purchases one of my sandals, they know that when they start to see the paint fade. Then they can just say, hey, cowboy, look, we're going to mail these back and we need these to be redone. So, and then they can smell them back. I'll repaint them, reseal them, and ship them all back. Because, now that's one thing, one little tip that I do. You guys don't have to do that. That's what I do. And it also, business tip, it also gets those clients to have faith and believe in you, and then they will start buying and purchasing more things. Now, 250 bucks for a pair of sandals, uh, some will say that's a lot of money, but <clears throat> when you're talking about the lifetime, and, and some of you crafters out there know this, I have a belt on right now. Actually, this belt is 15 years old. This belt is 15 years old. So, by being that old, and then you're looking at charging uh, $165, $175, just do the simple math. 15 divided by that is less than 10 bucks a year that they've actually probably would have spent on one of those little fake cheap pleather belts. But anyway, that's how I do my sandals right here at Premier Leather Crafters. If you guys have any questions, you can always inbox me. Let me get my camera back right. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, I'm always more than glad to help and give you at least what I know so you guys can at least be where I am. Now, I'm not the best crafter that's out there. I've seen some work that's on the guild and on the page that is outstanding. And, and that's the one, that's the philosophy that I like to adhere to is each one teach one and preserving and saving the craft. It is a dying craft because there's not that many crafters that's out here, especially those, you know, you have your hobbyists and your enthusiasts, but there's not too many out here that actually has made it a functioning, profitable business. So, and that's where we like to preserve the craft. So each one teach one, uh, and we'll keep this thing going. So I'm always open to questions. If I don't know it, I know some other crafters who do know it. And I'll have you an answer very quickly. Uh, and if you have any uh, things, I mean, and there might be some things that you guys want to know. Uh, or not want to know, but it might be some ideas in your head that you want to do. Uh, the simplest way to come up with a pattern that I have come up with is to get you an old pair of blue jeans. Don't sacrifice leather. Uh, and poster board uh, and uh, poster paper doesn't bend and conform to your foot like a piece of fabric material. So when I did the design on these, uh, I didn't use poster board on that because I wanted to know how the actual, when the leather starts to break down, how it's going to form and shape the foot, shape to the foot. So there's no other better way to get this pattern down than to Find an old pair of blue jeans. If you, if you don't have any uh, around the house, a Salvation Army or a Goodwill always have like 50 cent dollar pair of jeans. You're just going to cut them up. So again, saving your money on the front end to maximize your profits on the back end uh, if you're going to get off into selling these. Um, 
And then you just take that pair of jeans, cut you out some straps or whatever idea you may have, and lay that across your foot. Or lay that across your customer's foot if they're available locally to where you can size them. Once you have that done, uh, then you can take that that material and then lay it out on a piece of your poster paper or your cereal box and then you can trace that out and then you have your pattern because you already know how it's going to shape and form to the foot. Um, another thing that uh, I've seen a lot of crafters do is masking tape, uh, which I have tons of. You can always go and get you some masking tape and you can use that on top of, if you have shoe last, you can use that on top of your shoe last and then take your marker and draw your pattern out on top of your masking tape. And then with a regular utility knife or, or a uh, ex exacto, ex exacto knife, exacto knife, you can take that, cut out your pattern and then pull the tape off and then lay the tape on top of your poster paper or your cereal box and then cut your pattern. And then that way you can always have your pattern and your shape that you want. The only thing that you would have to do then is compensate for the width of the foot. Uh, and one thing to note about if you're going to buy the shoe last, make sure that you pay attention because these go all the way down to a narrow. Uh, you don't want to order from a company that is less than a D width. D width is pretty much standard foot uh, across the globe. Uh, and now you do have some customers that have a narrow foot, which is a C width, and they also go all the way down to B. And that is a very, very skinny foot, a very skinny foot. And then they go as wide as a triple E. So, uh, but in, even if you want to get up into a triple E, because the shoe lasses can, become, can be very expensive. I think I paid $36 a pair for the pair of each one of these, and I have four sets uh, and it's just the general sizes, a size 7, 8, 9, and a 10. And that pretty much gets me where I need to be as far as both women clients and my male clients as well. Uh, but uh, again, um, if you're going to buy the last, make sure you get the last that have a D on there. So if you're looking for a size 7, make sure that it is a 7D. That is pretty much standard across the globe. I hope that this helps somebody. I'm sorry that I couldn't get the PDF up or actually have it drawn out with measurements and things like that. Because basically leather crafting is all what you see. You are an artist. So nobody can see the art. Uh, nobody can see what's in your head except you. So, uh, and you may change the pattern up four or five times. You know, there's nothing written in stone that you have to sell a toe thong type sandal or a Gucci slide type sandal. You might want to get off into Roman style sandals, which is very, very, very popular to the European customers uh, across the pond. So uh, there's a whole bunch of things that's coming out. And as shoe styles change in the... Uh, the stores or in retail stores, like I said, even with the tan the tandem sandal that Nike is coming out with, a lot of people are spending $119 on those tandem 